but Joe 4 doesn't stop getting better and better. Now a new version was released and as usual is full of amazing new features. So today I'll be checking them out. And now let's start. Okay, so this version is Gujo 42 Dev 3. So let's read the introduction paragraph. Development is well underway for our next milestone, Gujo 42. After our Dev 2 snapshot, we kept merging new features and important bug fixes and gathered quite a number of them. So now we are ready for the third Dev snapshot to put those under broader user testing. It's been around a month since we started this release cycle with roughly two months to go until for 2 beta 1 and then another month to reach stable in early November 2023. So here we have uh, quite important information. The first one uh, is that in uh, maybe two months, which will be receiving the first uh, beta version of Goodjot for 2. And then in three months, so one month, month after the first beta, we should be uh, having released the uh, stable version so that would be november quite amazing because just a few months ago good joke for one was released as usual good joke is super nice they are always updating the engine so here we have uh, one feature that you may be interested in initial support for c sharp on android has been merged it's still a work in progress with Gabit's outline in the PR and we haven't had time to look into what it takes to provide official Android export templates for the .NET build. So at this time, we'll have to try compiling templates from source and provide feedback on what works and what doesn't. Pretty amazing, don't you think so? As usual, we have a lot of more improvements you can take a look, but I believe uh, this first one is the most important. It's also very important to keep in mind that while we try to make sure each dev snapshot is stable enough for general testing, this is by definition a pre-release piece of software, they say. Be sure to make frequent backups or use a version control system such as Git to preserve your projects in a case of corruption or data loss. Well, actually, the use of Git or any other uh, version control system, doing backups and that kind of stuff, of stuff uh, shouldn't only be used for pre-releases, -re pre should be used for every release, it doesn't matter if it is a pre-release or an official release. So we have over uh, 200 improvements and we'll have all the complete, all the complete list here, okay? And well, also we have here and the download. So let's actually download it. The download for this pre-release build can be found in our GitHub repository. And as usual, we have the standard build and the net build. The standard build uh, includes support for JD script and the net build includes support for C sharp. So let's let's download good out. Okay, so uh, here we are. And here in the assets. I we're gonna scroll down and find our platform. In my case, here it is, Windows 64. So you just gonna click that. And as usual, we have a compressed file. We can just open it. And here we have the uh, console and the executable file, the game engine. So let's double click it. We we'll wait just a couple of seconds. And now we should be able to create a, a game. Okay, so here we can also see the version. Well, here I find these new buttons right here to create a new project, to import or to scan a folder. Uh, and I believe those buttons uh, used to be right here. I haven't checked out betas and new releases or pre-releases pre of Godot for a while. So I don't really know if these buttons were added a couple of versions ago. But well, anyway, this is a new feature of the last versions. So I'm just going to create a new project and uh, name it. Then create folder. You can select your render as usual. This window is the exact same one. And I'm going to click create and edit. We're going to wait a couple of seconds until everything is set up. And well, here we are. 
So, uh, of course, the interface, literally everything will be exactly the same thing. I can see here uh, the first error in the 3D environment. Well, I don't know if you could see it at the beginning that when I zoom in or out like this yellow green line was like glitching in a way, but now it doesn't just small thing there. So let's go to a 2D environment and here I'm going to create a new 2D scene and um, let's create also a script. Um, okay. And here, uh, the first thing I would like to try out is, okay, firstly, uh, before I go something, I'm always having this warning here. I know that you can disable the blender or something like that in our uh, project settings. I know that, but I believe I don't understand uh, why as soon as you create a project with no settings, no blender, no nothing, you get this warning. That's quite... I don't know, I don't like it. Well, it's not that I don't like it, but I believe when you create a new whole project and you have nothing inside it, it's like no sense that you're receiving a warning. And this warning appeared from for like, I don't know, six months that I've been trying without versions for months, I don't really remember, but it's a, an error that's been there since the beta soft without 4.1 i believe or even without 4.0 i don't really remember but well <laughs> let's just skip that and let's code something very easy in my ready function remember that the ready function is called as soon as we start playing our game i'm gonna print a message that i'm gonna print for example subscribe to the channel that's exactly what you should be doing right now in order to um know the latest without news but well, uh, let's just now uh, print that. I'm gonna press play. I'm gonna select my current scene as my main one. And also I I'll have to save it. Okay, so here I have my message. Then to try something, let's say more complex. These are just tests to try if the version is just working well. I'm gonna create uh, some images here. Uh, some icons actually so uh, these are gonna be three in total and I'm gonna like center them okay right here and now in my code I'm gonna do also something very very simple if I'm pressing a uh, key zero um, I'm gonna change my first image color um, dot modulate to something like red for example okay then i'm gonna copy and paste these lines two more times like this but this time if i uh, press the one the color will be blue and it will also be applied to the second image finally if i press two i will change the color of the final image and will be yellow Okay, so this code is very, very simple and we are going to call this on the update, on the process delta, sorry, updated from Unity. Okay, I'm going to erase that, that. And now, well, I'm going to press 0, 1, 2. And as you can see, everything works just fine as expected. Also, remember that we also have the uh, web editor and that we should be able to find it right here try the web editor okay here we can see the version again again we can start the editor and we'll just have to wait a couple of seconds okay so here I have all my projects and uh, i'm gonna click create give it a name create folder and create an edit i can see that uh, starting the editor uh, was quite fast i believe even faster than the the last version of the web editor and even the project creation uh, was faster i believe so that's super nice because you can create games from your browser as you can see so uh, let's now uh, create something again very simple i'm just gonna create a new 2d sim 
Then inside here, I'm going to create a script with a project empty template. And also, I will have to create uh, three images as we have done on the desktop version. One here, two here, and three here. And again, I'm just uh, going to copy and paste uh, the code so that we can make this process a little bit faster. Okay, perfect. And so now I'm going to click play, play, select current, save. Okay, here we have our game. So now I'm going to close this window. No, sorry. Actually, I should uh, press the different keys, keys. So zero, one, and two. Again, everything working just fine. So as usual, this is all for today's video. If you want to be the first one to know the latest news about GoodJolt, please subscribe to the channel right now because I'm always uploading new content about GoodJolt and its new versions. This is all for today's video. See you on the next one and bye bye.